Hey guys, what's up? I'm coming to you live. Not live. Hey guys, what's up? I'm coming to you not live from my parents' bathroom to talk to you about crested geckos. I did not want to film today in the garage like I did my other videos, so I am filming in my parents' bathroom because this is the only place I could have some peace of mind for some reason. My bathroom is much too small, so I've chosen my parents' bathroom to do this video in. I really need my own place. I'm just praying that no one needs to pee while I film this because either someone will barge through this door or they'll go into my bathroom and my bathroom is surely a mess right now so I'll be hearing some screaming from the hallway and getting mad at me. I really need my own place. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about crested gecko care and how to take care of crested geckos. That's what crested gecko care means, so I just repeated myself. <laughs> Let's talk about crested geckos, and I'm going to try to try to make this pretty quick so I don't talk your ear off and bore you to death, and also because I'm in my parents' bathroom and I don't want anyone to barge in and need to pee. Let's discuss first, what is a crested gecko? What is that thing? Crested geckos are becoming extremely popular for pets and actually, I'm kind of glad this is a trend that I'm not too worried about. You know, because when some animals become the thing to own, people don't really know how to take care of them and they end up killing them and that's not good. You know, like when Finding Nemo came out, everyone wanted a clownfish and that didn't go too well for most people. So today we're going to be talking about crested geckos and actually the fact that they're pretty easy to own. They really don't require that much. And anyone that actually cares about animals will probably have no issue keeping these things alive and happy. Let's get a crested gecko out first to look at them. I do have two, but today we're only going to be looking at one. They both have their own cages, so this cage right here has one of my males. This right here is Echo. He is a crested gecko. This is what a crested gecko looks like. Crested geckos are called crested geckos because they have a crest on their gecko. On their gecko. Not on their gecko. They have a crest on their head. Kind of looks like a moon. See that crest? Do what makeup tutorial vloggers do. There you go. See that crest? That's a beautiful crest on this gecko. Now, you may be wondering, why does your crested gecko not have a tail? Well, you see, when crested geckos get stressed, or startled, they drop their tail. And unlike most species of geckos, these guys do not grow their tail back. Once it's gone, it is gone for good. So I don't really see the point of that defense if they can only use it once. So he has this awkward little nub instead of a tail. And that's okay. Once they lose it, it does take them a week or so to figure out how to balance without it, and then they are fine. It does not harm them in captivity whatsoever to not have a tail. It's actually pretty hard to have a crested gecko their whole life without them losing their tail. So if yours does fall off, you're not the worst owner in the whole world. It's pretty normal. For example, mine decided to toss it when I was just touching him, and my other crested gecko decided to drop it in the middle of the night while we were all sleeping, and there was nothing to startle him whatsoever. Saw his own shadow and decided to throw it. So don't feel too bad if you lose your crested gecko's tail, it's okay. Crested geckos live in trees, they don't live on the ground, they live up here instead of down here. So if you're looking for a cage for a crested gecko, you don't need one that has a lot of floor space, you need one that has a lot of height. As you can see, my crested gecko's cage is pretty thin, it just goes straight up, that's all they need. They don't need a lot of floor space, they're never going to really go down there. Sometimes mine goes on the ground to shed or to hunt for crickets, but that is it. Other than that, they stay up in the trees, always. There are a few options for crested gecko tanks. Um, no matter what tank you get, I always recommend turning them on their sides, unless they're like massive tanks. But anything 29 gallons or less, they really do, you know, much better on their sides rather than horizontally. They do a lot better vertically. Because of this, right here I have a 20 long and it is turned on its side. The lid is by, I believe it was a Zilla tank. I don't know for sure. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong in editing, but I believe it was a Zilla tank, it may not be for sure. But basically any 20 gallon log on its side will be great from a It'll be great from an adolescent all the way through adulthood and till they die. 20 long is great, except for baby baby babies. If you have a crested gecko that's under three to four inches, I really would not recommend a 20 long, only because they're gonna have a lot more issues finding their food in such a big tank and they may end up starving themselves. So it's best to get a smaller tank for the young and then a 20 long for sub-adults and then of course adults. This is an adult crested gecko. This is as big as they get, um, just not including the tail. He is about two years old, I do believe. I don't know his exact age, but I believe he's about two years old. I did not get him when he was a baby, and that's why I don't know his age. They can live to be 15 years old, so please make sure this is an animal you actually really want and not just an impulse buy, because it is a 15-year commitment, and if you don't end up wanting it, you have to worry about finding it a new home, and if you don't care what home it goes to, then you probably shouldn't have the animal in the first place. As you can tell, he is starting to darken up, which actually indicates some sort of stress. 
It can also be a response to light, not necessarily a stress response, but most of the time it is any time they are stressed and taken out of their environment that they are familiar with, they tend to start darkening up. This is called being flared up. Now, when he is entirely as flared up as it gets, he turns pretty black, almost chocolatey, except for his crest and down his middle. That always stays that one color. Now, because he's starting to darken up, I'm gonna go ahead and put him back in his cage so I don't have to, you know, further stress him out. He's gonna go back in there. Oh, okay. Wrong way, buddy. Thank you. Okay, I'll leave the lid open because he hasn't gone fully in there yet. So now that you're kind of familiar with the cage itself, I personally don't put a light on my crested gecko cage. I've had people argue me about this, but I don't think crested geckos need light. I honestly don't think they need any kind of lighting. And that's that's my opinion from owning them. I've seen no issues keeping them without light. They do need calcium and they do need vitamin D3, but all of that can be supplemented within their own food. They do not need a light to give this to them. A lot of people think that they will get some metabolic bone disease with out the light and that it's gonna just turn their bones to like mush but I have seen no problems mine have been perfectly fine without light I know plenty of people who don't have lights on their cresteds and they do perfectly fine in my opinion the lights can actually further stress them and they seem to be happier without them for my experience but please feel free to do your own research and decide for yourself because I'm definitely not saying that lights are harmful or bad for them I'm just saying I don't see the need for light make your own come to your own conclusion on lighting but I do think they do perfectly fine at room temperature 76 degrees they are fine my house gets to like 77 fine I really don't see any problems with the room temperature and the light they get from my room light being turned on and then at night everything being turned off unless your room gets to like 60 degrees at night I really don't think they need any kind of external heating they come from a place called New Caledonia which does have its colder nights and they do just fine so <laughs> so that's just my opinion Okay, they are jumpers, so please do not handle them like up high and just like wave them around and wait for them to jump to their death. They can handle jumps pretty well, but there is going to be that every off chance that it does fatally, it kills them. Please be careful when handling your crested gecko, especially babies, because they are very, they jump. So when it comes to food, my favorite food is Pangea. Let's see if that will focus. There you go. They come with a lot of different flavors. I like them all. Not, not saying they personally taste good from my own experience, but my geckos really, really like them and I think the ingredients are really good for them. I really, really like this one. Um, every so often I mix in this rapashi, which can also be a complete meal for them. I don't do this for all the time because they like Pangea a lot more, but the good thing about rapashi is I believe it has vitamin, uh, yeah, the good thing about, the good thing about rapashi is it has vitamin D3 and calcium in it. Well, I don't think all of these flavors do, so it does give them calcium and vitamin D3, which is both things that they need in their diet. So I kind of, I mix it, I go back and forth. My geckos just like Pangea so much that I don't want to stick to just Rapashi. I do recommend giving your crested gecko crickets once or twice a month, but that's really all they need. I throw in about a dozen crickets every two to three weeks. Um, they get some and I like to dust them in calcium so they get that calcium. In the wild, geckos actually eat fruit over crickets. They eat a lot of rotten fruit in the wild so do not give your crested gecko crickets to live off of. That is not a healthy diet for them. They need their fruit blend. Um, if anything, the crickets should be a treat. Too many crickets will just make your crested gecko obese. I'm really just doing like the main things. I'm not going to talk about illnesses and stuff like that in this video so I'm pretty much almost done other than just talking about how to set up the cage and misting it down. You can get a much smaller mister than this, it's just with all of my animals I like to have a big one so I don't have to do so many refills. Using purified water, please do not use tap water, tap water is not good. Tap water is not good for reptiles or amphibians, it's just not good. So please use purified water for all the feeding and all of the water and all of the misting. Once or twice a day you just gotta mist down their cage, I like to use lukewarm water not the like really cold water. You mist down their whole cage you don't need to drench it but make everything in there wet and this is gonna help them shed this is gonna be where they're gonna drink a lot of their water um, I like to supply mine also with a water dish every once in a while I do catch them drinking out of their water dish but um, 
pads is where they're gonna get most of their water from misting it down in their cage. Mist down the cage once or twice a day, twice if you can, that's great. I do mine right when I wake up and right when I go to bed. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the decorations in the habitat. Everything in the enclosure needs to be promoting climbing rather than sitting on the ground or hiding in the ground like in a hole or something. For substrate, it's really simple. You can even use paper towels if you want. They're not gonna be down there much. Paper towels can also help if you're a new crested gecko owner. It's easier to catch, you know, to be able to observe if they're pooping. So, um, paper towels is fine. I use Reptabark. You don't want to use sand or anything they can easily swallow. You want to use the big chunky Reptabark. You can use Eco Earth. Eco Earth is fine. It's not gonna hurt them. And paper towels works too. For decorations, I like to put like one tree at the bottom for them to climb up and then just vines. You cannot overdo it on vines, as many vines as you want. I have a video, an older video of me setting up a crested gecko tank. You can watch that if you want to see different, you know, ideas. All I do is I have vines going up from the bottom to the top so they can navigate through the whole tank. And for feeding dishes, I like to use magnetic feeding dishes so they don't have to come to the ground to eat because they're going to be less inclined to want to go to the ground to eat. They're going to want to stay in the tree. So I use a magnetic food ledge. It stays on the side. So I use a magnetic food ledge. It stays on the side of the tank and he doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom to get the food and then it just has disposable cups that I can throw out when you know I'm done tossing it in a new one or you can clean out the cups whatever you want to do that's really the simple that's that's it they're so simple to take care of I'm serious so that's really the video that's how you take care of a crusty gecko it's really that simple I'm hoping I didn't forget anything because I really did do this like I saw that this room was empty and I was like, I'm taking advantage of this, I'm filming a video, and then I just ran in here and did it, and I hope I don't forget anything. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then I will do my outro because I don't know how much longer I have in here. Someone is bound, someone needs to pee at this point. Mist, leave them alone, don't pick at it. See why I don't film inside, guys? Um, yeah, that, that's it. So, and I'm in a tough situation right now with filming, but I'll figure it out, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and thank you for the 150,000 subscribers. And yeah, thank you guys. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.